Hey everyone, this is the second in a series of video tutorials that will explain Boolean logic circuits in layman's terms. So this video is focused on the OR gate. Uh, the first video is focused on the AND gate. So if you've got here without seeing the first video, I highly suggest that you go back unless you already have some sort of understanding of Boolean logic circuits. Alright, so OR is a little bit different than AND in that it has a lot more situations where it will become true as an output, and it's also different than we'd say it, so it's harder to explain. As an example, your teacher tells you to pick up your pencils or your pens. You could pick up your pencils, which is valid, your teacher wouldn't freak out, or you could pick up your pens, your teacher would still find that alright. But in English, if you picked up your pencils and your pens, your teacher would freak out because that just doesn't make any sense. But that's perfectly valid if you're going from Boolean logic standpoint. In Boolean logic, OR means one or the other, or both. It just needs one true value to become all true. So because the pencils and the pens are true, technically, you have both of them, you only needed one for the output to be true, so you have a true value. Here's a Venn diagram of the OR gate. You'll see that it's represented by a plus sign. Uh, that helps with math, so if you have 0 plus 1, you get 1. 1 plus 0, you get 1. The only problem this breaks down, and it's the part where it goes against English and algebra that you've learned before, is 1 plus 1, because you can only have 0 and 1, still equals 1. So just x equals 1, just y is 1, but x and y is still 1 in an OR gate. So let's head over to our lovely logic lab. We have both of the switches we have connected to the OR gate are on. So 1 or 1 is still 1. 0 or 0 is 0. 1 or 0 is 1. And 0 or 1 is 1. So this one's a little less discriminatory against its needs. It's less specific. If we go over to a truth table, our lovely Wikipedia, here we have 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is 1, 1 or 1 is 1. And it's a little easier to understand. Alright, so if we head over to our lovely math, we have two inputs, A and B, and we want to represent them as <coughs> a logic gate. We just put the plus symbol in between. So A or B, this is how you'd represent it. <coughs> Now I said before in the earlier vi uh, earlier video that the power of logic circuits is combining them to make new things. So if we head it over to the logic lab, we can add more stuff. So let's say we had three inputs, but the OR the OR only takes two. So that means we're gonna need another logic port, logic gate. And let's put in our AND gate, just for fun. Move our output out of the way, our OR gate. Disconnect these. Let's move this over. Disconnect them. And because these only have one output, we need to put one of them at least into two. So let's split our middle output into more than one. And we'll add these. I have absolutely no idea what the circuit is going to do. That's just how cool these things are. They just seem to work. Um, hmm. Now we need something that takes two. Oh yeah, so now we have reduced our three down to two. So we can move our light and disconnect it. And let's pick another AND gate. So three gates resulting in one output. 
So let's just flip these on. So 1 and 0 is 1, 0 and 0 is 1, so not really interesting there. Oh, this one's cool. So as this one comes out, 1 and 1, 1 and 1, this is 1 or 0, so it becomes 1, which gives us 1 and 1. So I need switches A and B turned on to turn on the lights. Turn on this one, no effect. Oh, interesting. But A and A and C are on. Gives me no light no light switch on because the final gate is an and. If it was an or, this one would be on, because it'd be zero or one is one. But this one is zero and one, so zero multiplied by one is still zero. If there's any light switch that can turn it on by itself, there isn't. Uh, how about these two? These can't turn it on either. Hmm. So you can have all three, or just the top two. It's a lazy light switch for some people, I suppose. Interesting how that works. And that's just a little bit of a more complicated circuit. So let's try and represent our made-up circuit with Boolean uh, notation which is kind of the whole point of this. So we have three inputs, A, B, and C. A, B, and C. So what we've done is we've taken B or C. So B Oops. There we go. B or C is our first operation. Let's head back. We have A and B is another operation. So A and I can use the star as a multiplication sign this time. It's just multiplication. <coughs> A and B. Also, another way of representing the AND gate would be to just place the two right beside each other. So, it's just like regular multiplication. Let's get rid of that. Those are our two that are combined together in the AND gate. I'll show you here. So we have A and B, which is AND, B, or C. So, Let's try working from the center. A and B. And, so let's put some brackets around these. B or C. That is our circuit in binary notation. You can see. And just like regular things, we can work this out as an expression in algebra, if you remember the rules. So let's say we wanted to turn the light on using just the first two switches, like we learned before. So if we replace all the A's with true, or 1, and we can replace the C, which was off, with 0, and we can turn this one on and on, because the first two switches were A and B. So 1 multiplied by 1 was 1, put that in brackets, and 1 plus 1 was 1, and then again we hit 1 multiplied by 1, which is 1, our final value. That will show us how to work out these switches just with algebra. And we'll head off to the next video, this is going to be about the NOT gate which is pretty useful.